they understand. They understand? Yeah, animals know, like, can understand so much more than people think they yeah, can. You're too far. I'm too far. Uh, okay, yeah. here. We are joined again with Miss Isabella Legacy. How have you been since the last time? I have been amazing. Thank you. How have you been? Pretty good. Just podcasting every day. So let's jump into what you just said. So I have a cat here, and she said to talk to her about the people I bring by because she's confused. Yes. So you can speak to animals. I can. And she gave me this look. I said, okay, I think she has something to say. And she's just, she's confused. She's curious more than anything, but she really just wants to know what's going on. Well, what language do they speak when they're talking to you? Or is it tra English? It translates to you like Yeah. How? You I... amaze me every time you come here. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? I could not <laughs> tell you how that works at all. But yes, it's, you can always what, talk to them and always What works. does her voice sound like? the animals almost always have the same voice to me oh, really? i guess if i think about it i guess maybe they're different sometimes but it's just very like a conversation like you and i would have can you tell me what he's thinking i would have to look at him i have to like connect with like their heart mm. chakra pee -pee. i will see if he comes it's, yeah some animals don't want to talk that's I another don't. thing they don't always want to connect yeah. what else what other things did she tell you that's all I got. Okay. <laughs> That's all I got. Okay. So we talked about a book last time, the Kabbalion. You said you kind of like touched up on it. Yes. He told me, he goes, look into this. And I did. Okay. So what did you learn? Let's hear the clip. So the my takeaway was there was seven laws, right? Like yeah. the gist of it. Any familiar to you? Or is this the first time you're hearing yes. it? Yes. Yeah. Okay. A lot. All of them. Yes. The one I resonated with the most and the one I read on the most was about how your thoughts are your reality. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the one I really took away from that, I think. Is okay. Any, you, have you read all the seven principles, like polarity and all that? Yes. I, I know a good, I couldn't name them all off the top of my head, honestly. But is this something similar that you guys practice? In like, In life. Yeah, I absolutely. Yeah, I think people practice them without knowing, but I think when you do it consciously, it's much better, of course, if you're consciously actually doing them all the time. Okay, I'll explain to you what polarity is. You haven't touched on it that much, right? Not in the, that book, okay, at so least. Okay, so it goes like this, and I started to pay attention to this trend. It's saying everything in life goes by two poles. So let's say, for example, you get dumped by a girl, right? All your energy is low, down, frequency, everything, right? So they're saying you've just shifted this way, right? And eventually, the pendulum has to swing back mm -hmm. this way. That means one day soon after this ends, you're going to swing into a pendulum of happiness and pure bliss, and you're going to be like, wow, is this my life from now on? So that's the law of polarity. Your life is constantly swinging. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? Okay, I totally believe that. I believe that. I've never heard it in that term right, or with right. that, but yes, absolutely. Yes, these are called hermetic laws. Yes. That apparently every religion was built on. Yes, yes. I did read up on that a little bit right. too, yeah. What do you think about religion, actually? That's the first topic I want to talk about. I think there's always this word that I don't forget. It's like O M omnis or something. It's when somebody sees truth in every single religion, but they don't resonate with a single one all the way. Uh -huh. Yes, I can see that. And I very much believe that. I think every religion, there is something I see in it that I relate to and I think is true in some way. Right. I think some religions were created maybe not with the best intent always i think that's a whole nother story but i think personally myself i resonate more with like the buddhist religions and eastern religions and such more than western at least okay so what kind of morals or principles in every religion because i feel like a lot of them copy and paste each other yes and so i believe in reincarnation i think that's a oh, big some. Yeah, so I think that's very much, I never met a Western religion yeah. that did. So that's very much something like the Buddhist religion that I really take. Um, I think the whole not worshipping one God or one thing and living your life for that. I think the religions that are more into living your life for yourself, I resonate with According more. According to you, is worshipping one God bad or good? I don't think you should live your life for other people. Or mean? for one God. Oh, oh, to satisfy one God. Yeah, it's because I think the whole, like, heaven or hell. I mean, what if you die and it's not true? You've just right. lived your whole life in a way that maybe you wouldn't have. Right. I mean, what they say is we're all godly creatures. And 
we are our yes. own gods yes i like the egg theory right is that the one that touches on that what's the egg theory like which came first the chicken or the egg i think it's that we're all one like we're all one yeah. soul yeah, yeah i just read a book um right after our podcast the Tao. you ever heard of the Tao? oh yes uh, yes you read that yeah book? i haven't I read it. it i know about it though yes wow. that puts everything you said into like summary it's saying exactly. don't criticize people you're the same person just yeah. living through a different life and you've been through their life yeah, which I think is so weird to think about. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if I fully believe right. in that theory, but I think it's a nice way to go about life, though, and right. not, you know, judge in such a way. I agree. For sure. Because I feel like you would agree with that. You're very, like, harmonious. You don't really like yeah. to criticize people. I mean, everybody's here for a different reason, you know? It's, it's just life. Have you ever heard of Bob Lazar? Ooh, I don't know if I have. Bob Lazar. He's the guy who um, was the whistleblower for the aliens in the area 51 like the original one i probably have then yeah i want to show you something okay because i got this video ready for you um because we talked about aliens last time so he went on this interview a long time ago um and he said this is what aliens think of us so i want you to just watch mm. yeah <laughs> and this guy has been he's, he's taken lie detector tests all come back true that he used to work for area 51 as an engineer and he's like i used to see a little, little beings all around there he's like they were hiding a lot of stuff from the from the public so this is an interview. The only hard sort of thing is that there is an extremely classified document dealing with religions about that thing. Period. But why would there be any classified material dealing with religion? I want to go back to the religion thing. I want you to say it. It just is so, it's so far out. It's, it's, uh, All right, your objection has been noted. Okay. What does it say? That we're a container. That's how, that's how supposed What do you think of that? So we're all each our own container or as like a collective? So. I don't know. I don't know. He didn't touch on that, but oh. I saw that recently. I was like, this is the weirdest thing I've ever seen. Oh, I feel like I have to know more now. Right. I'm well, intrigued. Yeah, right? yeah, That's interesting. I know, 100%. I knew you'd like that. I was like, if I said yeah. something else, I'd be like, what, what, what do you I'll take today? I'll have to look into that later. I'm interested. Container. Oh, I don't know if that's good or bad. <laughs> I don't know. It, would it look like as aliens look at us like a joke? Kind of like you're just... Yeah you think so yeah i think i think earth is you know they say it's like the newest planet yeah, you, you know it's only when you come to that you don't remember or know anything right. so yeah i think we're all pretty dumb sometimes but i think that's the point of being here mm -hmm. that's what we're meant to be and I, I don't remember if i asked you this last time on other planets if you're born is your memory wiped no earth is the only planet that you don't remember whoa, anything whoa, 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 why i don't know i couldn't really tell you exactly why but that's just how it is Oh, that's super weird. It is. That's why it's so challenging. <laughs> okay. Um, I want to touch about karma. Okay. Oh, yeah. Because the Kabbalion, the book that you, like, um, Cliff noted, huge on karma. And I didn't believe in karma, and I still can't say yes or no. But the book, based on what this, what I said, the polarity, the pendulum swing. Mm -hmm. So if you hurt someone, you might be here, and it'll come back to you and slap you. So what's your take on karma? I fully believe in karma. I believe in good karma way more than bad karma. You believe in good karma more than bad karma? Yeah, I think more if you do more good, you get more good. Yes. I think if you do more wrong, you, you still get wronged, right? But I don't think to the same extent. I don't think it's the same energy wave. Really? Why is it so forgiving? I wouldn't say it's forgiving even. I just think it responds more to good than bad. Hmm. You know, it's kind of like what you think about more is what your life will be like more. 100%. I agree yeah. with that absolutely so in the book did it talk about if babies are born with or without karma are they innocent oh that's a good one i did not mention that that i think it's their karma less but you believe in reincarnation so i do so yeah where does that fall so this is something i've read multiple books about and every book had a different answer that some came with right. karma from past lives and some were born innocent it's that whole argument like if you knew Hitler as a baby, would you kill him, right? And it's like, so it's like, I don't know, would you? I don't know the right answer to that. But I think it's interesting because personally, I still don't know. I think as a baby, though, if you are defenseless, I think you're innocent in that way. Like people mm. shouldn't hurt you because mm. you can't defend yourself. Mm. 
but maybe as a soul and a being who's done wrong in other lives maybe you're not innocent in that way what do you believe about programming or do you believe about programming they say within the first seven years of birth yes oh i believe in that so much okay tell me what you think what do you know about it i think it's a lot i mean of course your environment but so much who your parents are too which i think is really hard for people who don't have good parents and try to break out of that later on um luckily i had really great parents who knew all about that i was raised in that way what do your parents do um my mom does everything she's like a psychic medium she's like a sex therapist just like holistic strategy reiki like so, everything so you got everything from your mom i did Am I genetic passing i think very much like a lot more passes on than people realize like emotionally anything wise um and my dad's like a shaman he's a writer so like Whoa. of course like he's very enlightened too like both my parents are just very enlightened people Whoa, which shit. is amazing and very fortunate for me especially that i was interested in that right. but i think your childhood has so much to do just with the way you think more than anything like how your subconscious mind is programmed are you are they proud of what you're doing in life? I think they are, yeah. They're, 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 they probably wouldn't be judgmental. No, I don't think it's so much what I do with my life in that way, but just who I am in life. I feel like it was always like, just be a good person. Like, you could do whatever you want. You could be like a stripper, but like, just be nice to people. I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I feel like it really is. If you're just nice and you're a good person in the world, you know, like, who cares what you do to get by? But you think being a stripper will be okay? Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's really? a career. It's a career. It, well, you know, it has a short expiration, like five to seven years. If I told you be a doctor, but it only last five years, would you go to med school? No, I don't want to be a doctor. I'd rather be a stripper than a doctor, honestly. You're me. <laughs> Why? Oh, I have no interest in being a doctor. I think it's great you're helping people, but people can say strippers are too in a different way. Okay, let's talk about this. Okay. Uh, so you don't, I wouldn't say condemn, it's a rough word, but you allow people well not allow like you're okay with people being a stripper oh absolutely i think sex work is such like a frowned upon and shame thing and it shouldn't be but you believe in energies when I you do. when people have sexual intercourse you're exchanging energy so if a person is coming in there and let's say he's sleeping around on his wife right that's that's a bad exchange of energy so it is on that? I think this gets very tricky yeah, in here, exactly. but I think as a woman and just the feminine energy is that like you're here as a woman and a lot of these strippers, I feel like if you do it right and you're in the right mindset, you're here to please, you know, women are all about like living in pleasure. So I think it can very much be seen as like receiving and giving in that way mm. of love and like prettiness and feminine, you know, just I think there's a right way to do it, you know, how would you do it if you were a stripper? It seems like a really immoral question to ask me. <laughs> How would I do it? I think I would just see it as a thing of like people are here to see me and have a good time in that way, right? There doesn't need to be anything more than that. Because yeah, if I don't know he's married, that's not on me, right? Mm -hmm. And that's still not on me if like, you know. Mm -hmm. Interesting. That's a hard question, but I, I believe in strippers. It's funny because I, I thought it would go against your morals. <laughs> no, not at all. I mean, sex work is one of the only careers women always make more in. Yeah, then I feel like else. it's very empowering as a woman too, and it should be legal. I think you know you should be able to be a prostitute. I believe in all of that. Okay, but l back to the energy exchange when you're having sex. What do you know about that? I know a lot about that. And personally, I could never have sex with people like as no, no, a prostitute you, like, like that. You know that you could share yeah, with me. I think you do exchange energy, right. of course, and I think it's good and bad. It's like karma, you know. But I think when you're working, there's a way to do that that is not so deep i no, guess no, i'm not talking about that okay I'm just saying in general like when you're sleeping can you teach me more about sex oh, how it exchange exchanges or what happens um what you know about it yeah i think that all depends when you have sex too so it, could, it can depend on like the moon so you have sex on like a full moon that's like more of like a soul tie they call it really if you have sex on your period that's like a soul tie and really? then a lot of people believe you're like tied to the soul for like lifetimes and lifetimes after until you undo it what? So there's a lot of things more than just like energy and sex itself, but like the time you have it, just anything like that. So if I was to have sex with a girl on her period, I'm more likely to have her attached to me. Soul tie, yeah, more likely fall in love. Just there's a whole thing behind that. Whoa. What about these? Um, I'm sure you heard about it. In my culture, there's a lot of things about women who have like husbands who are like have a wandering eye and they make these spells to keep them and i heard something about like they put little amounts of their juice in the tea mm. and they drink it 
You never heard that? I have not heard that. Yeah. I would like to hear about that. That sounds so, interesting. I guess, uh, my culture, man. Russians are weird. So what they do is uh, the women on their period, they'll take, they'll take a little bit of their fluid and they'll make a tea out of it and they'll let the husband drink it. And that bonds him and he'll stop basically having a wandering eye or cheating and he won't be able to leave her. There's like a very spell and you could do like an incantation and stuff like that. That's I heard it when I was very young. Like, you guys are weird as fuck. I believe in that. I could see the thought like, process like, behind it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very like cringy stuff, but okay, let's go to manifestation. Okay. Are there any risks with manifestation? I don't think there are any. I think your biggest risk is to change your life and to live the life you want right. and you dream of. You have to give up the one you're living a lot of the time. Okay. So my mom argued with me recently because I told her, I was like, oh, wait, if you, it's easy to manifest what you want because she wants something, right? I told her, <laughs> do, do this and just keep practicing in your head to see a, a mental image of it. And she's like, no, I know manifestation comes at a cost because if you get it, mm. somebody will die. And I'm like, I don't know about that. What do you think about this? I don't believe in that. But I think it is a cost just to whatever you had. Like if you want a new car, you probably have to give up your old car, right? It's just anything like right. that. But it's not bad in any way. I don't right. think there's any bad to it, honestly. That's, what I I was like, well, that's so weird. Yeah. She's making it seem like we're summoning a demon and asking for a favor. It's very much a scarcity mindset that I think a lot yeah. of people are in in that way. It's like, there's not enough to go around. And there is. We could all have nice cars. We could. Just people don't think we can. Yeah, same. So you think then there's no limit to manifestation? Oh, not at all. I think we could all be billionaires and have mansions if we wanted to. How often do you manifest and what do you do exactly? Oh, every day. Well, every day. I started this new program. I bought one. It's like a 60 day manifesting program. What? Um, which has been really good for me so far, but it's like this group. So you're in the group of the energy. So we're, we're all in a Facebook group together, which mm. has been really fun. Um, but every day you recite all these words, all right. these, this like, I'm so wealthy. I'm so, you yeah. know, whatever it is. And then you write down, you like channel in the universe, like energy, and you write down what you want to be that day or whatever right. you're working on. And it's been going good. I manifest in a lot of different ways. My newest one that I feel like has worked really well for me. I've tried everything I know of. I feel like sometimes I'm like, this really clicked, right? Like, this was great. And sometimes I'm just like, you know, yep. this I isn't it. Maybe I did something wrong. Maybe it just didn't connect. But sometimes I'm just that. like, what the hell is going on? Like, uh -huh. um, but this new one, I've been like bartering with the universe like we like banter together and i bartering what is that word? i'm not familiar like i just it's like a business exchange i like oh, negotiate snap. and i've never i've never like really looked in this one at all because i kind of thought i was like i was like this is like so easy like how can it be this easy right which it should be you know like the law of least effort right the universe loves yeah, like yeah, 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 yeah. take the easy route there's nothing wrong with yeah. that the universe loves the easy route yeah. but you literally just talk to the universe like you're just bantering like you're it's a business exchange so i'm like hey like we're doing really good making money like this is what i do every day and i'm like hey like we're making a lot of money like we're doing really good let's just keep going like let's amped it up a bit you know like i like this i like this i don't like this i don't like this like literally just talk to it like it's my friend like i'm making like a business deal and it's worked so well and i never knew it could just be this easy but i'm literally just like hey universe i like this i like this i don't like this let's work on this i want more of this like da, -da, -da. and it's worked like so insanely well so you're talking to a inanimate object but you're talking yeah. to the universe verbally yes like i'm just like it whoever you want to call it source angel spirit guides whatever it is right mm -hmm. you literally just talk to it like you're negotiating a deal mm -hmm. and what i learned which i've known this but i feel like I don't like to believe it is the whole like when you meet somebody it's kind of I saw this example the other day it was like okay you're at the market and there's like three cups on the table and there's one you really want mm -hmm. right but they give you this one and you just take it because you're like oh this is good enough right mm -hmm. but with the universe the universe will do that it'll like give you like maybe like a partner right it'll be like hey like this is kind of what you want like is this good enough and it really just doesn't know any better right but if you just take it and say like yeah this will do like there's a few things but like this will do it'll just be like oh cool she's happy she's fine right but if you're like hey no you talk to her like hey i like this i like this i like this but like i don't like this and this it'll come back like a business deal it'll come back with something else like you can literally barter the universe like you're bartering in like mexico with like the sellers on the streets right which That's like we've crazy. all done right and it's super easy you yeah. you get what you want yeah. the universe just doesn't know any better i think that's the thing that people 
think it does you know it's like a rough draft and yeah like, and it doesn't this. mean to like it loves you it wants the best for you it just doesn't know wait wait wait, wait. How, so the facebook group is telling you to do this no this was something else completely that i like saw the other day from another manifesting coach and so that's what it is it, that manifesting coach just said talk to universe yes and then i don't know if it was the same one or somebody else i saw this other thing and it explained it as like the universe is like your eager boyfriend who you just met right who like so badly wants to please you but doesn't know you so it's like he sees you get your nails done every week right so she so it's like oh she wants to get her nails done all the time so he like gives you all these like opportunities to get your nails done but you're like no i don't want my nails done every week i want more money to get my nails done or like i want more of something else so it's just like that like the universe doesn't know any different until you tell uh -huh. it Right? right so i feel like that was really like good too because it's just like oh they don't mean to do that like i'm not doing it wrong the universe isn't doing it wrong right. it just doesn't know it's learning yeah because like it sees what you do and it thinks like oh this is her this is what she wants but i only get my nails done every two weeks i don't want that every day i don't Your need nails are very cute by the way thank you like i don't need to do that every day right. though you know it's like i need something else your boyfriend is he similar to you no. oh my god no we are so <laughs> Oh, oh my god, this is so funny. I love him to death. You were you have such a unique personality. I love he's great. I mean I wanna say no, he's sure he, great. I'm not hating. We are so different. And I knew this the moment I met him. I knew the moment I met him, I said, Oh shit, he's a subconscious manifestation. He's a subconscious. Like I not knowingly, I subconsciously manifested him. And I know he's good for me and he pushes me. Because at the time, I had just got a relationship with the perfect guy who I thought was perfect, right? Like, he was just going to take care of me. Like, I was never going to work. I was just going to be a mom. Like, all this stuff that I thought I wanted. Really? You're like that? You don't even give me those vibes. No, like, that was, I mean, I was 18 at the time. This was, like, a year or two ago, right? Like, I was very young. But I was just like, this is what I want. Like, I'm never going to have to work. I'm going to drive, like, my Porsche. I'm going to be a mom. Like, and that's what I thought I wanted, right? Like, so badly. Uh -huh. And, like. But subconsciously, I didn't. Like, I knew better deep down, right? But I didn't. Right. And we broke up. I literally met this man, like, the week we broke up. And I met him. I was just like, shit. Like, I know this is what I actually need and want, even if it's not, like, present in my life. But I knew subconsciously he was exactly what I needed and what I wanted. So would you consider that a rebound? No. No, we didn't really start, like, dating. I met him here, actually. But then yeah, I, I went off. That. Yeah. So what do you mean he's exactly what you needed in terms of like physical attraction? No, just in terms of like he pushes me. Mm, like, he, like I was going to do the skincare line that I've been working on for ages. Oh my God, ages. you should definitely do it. Yes. If you talk about auras, I could sense an aura <laughs> from you that shit will sell. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. so where I was going to do this and I met this guy. And he's like, no, like don't do it. Like we'll be fine. Like you can do it later. So I just like stopped working on it because I was like, I'm going to be set for life. I don't need to do a skincare line. Right. So I meet this guy. He's like, when are you going to do it? Like, are you going to do it? Like, you should do this. I'm like, oh, like, you're right. And like, I'm glad he pushes me that way because I didn't think that's what I wanted. Right. But I know it's what I need and it is what I want deep down. Organic products? Yes, of, of course. course. Holistic is all Reiki. Yeah. Make sure but yeah. coconut oil. I love coconut oil. But it's very, it was subconscious. You know, it's a subconscious manifestation. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then, I mean, you're obviously going to hold the secret to yourself. Where do you see yourself with him? Do you see yourself in the long run? This is another great question. I got to say that I got to talk about my ex-boyfriend for a second right. here. Because this was very much, you know, they talk about law of detachment, right? I feel like people think it's just like, you just got to detach from it. Like, just let it be, right? No, that's not how you do it correctly. So my last relationship, I was like, this is it or it's nothing, right? Like, I was just so convinced it was going to work out. I was going to get married. I was just so like, this is my life. Mm -hmm. It didn't work out, obviously. Mm -hmm. I'm like, shit. Like, I was so set. Like, I had no other plan. I had no other idea. So I meet this guy. I'm like, okay, I can't do that again. Like, I can't dedicate my life in this way. Like, I need something else. So I feel like I really mastered the law of detachment because I learned about it even more. You have to fall in love with the other option to fully mm -hmm. master the law of detachment. What does that mean? So it's like I have fell in love with the idea of being married to him and I've fallen in love with the idea of being single again. Oh, you sneaky woman. And that's how you master the trick. law of detachment. But that's it's how you sneaky. master. <laughs> no, see, I think <laughs> you have to be like this with everything oh, in yeah. life, oh, right? Yeah. Like anything you want. Like you want this apartment. It's like, great, but you have to fall in love with the other option too, right? But you just told me don't do the law of detachment. 
No, you have to. I'm saying you have to. With everything in your life. And the only way you can fully master it and actually do it correctly is to fall in love with whatever the other option is. So, I love having you on this podcast. Thank you. So, like, for relationships, right, is being single is your other option, right? For, like, I the car it. you want, you fall in love with a different car, different option. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, you pick and choose your sacrifice. So, it sounds terrible, but, I mean, the idea of getting married is super exciting to me. The idea of being single is super exciting to me. What I love them you, both. Okay, actually, I had a follow-up question. Do you want children? I do, so badly, yeah. So badly? Yes. How many? Three, I think. I, I already know all my children. So I'll have three. I'll have three. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you want children. Okay. How would you raise them? Probably the same as you, right? Yes. Like homeschooled, no TV. <laughs> what? You're homeschooled? Oh, I was homeschooled for a lot of my life. Not uh, all of why it. Mom... Oh, she didn't want you the public education brainwashing. Okay. I wouldn't say it was really that, but what yeah. Was what was I think a mix of that, but a mix of just not the structure, not the whole like, you know, I mean, since you're a kid, you're like, oh, where are you going to go to college? What job are you going to have? You know, I think there's so much more to life than just dreaming of working and labor. And your mom never pushed you for any of that? No, not at all. It's always like, well, if you want to go to college, sure, but like, there's other options. Mm. And you caught on really early, huh? Smart. I did, which I'm so thankful that I had parents like that. Otherwise, it would have been hard. Fortunate. Yes. Um, okay, so back to your boyfriend for a little bit. <laughs> um, so he doesn't do, he doesn't believe in anything you believe in. I know he probably like humors you, but. He doesn't? He does. I just, he's not into it. He doesn't apply it in the way I do. Oh, I love what you, what me and you are interests. I love that kind of stuff. <laughs> it's very outside of the norm. Yes, we're, it's really that opposites attract. You know, he's really, and he's doing his master's right now. He's into the whole like work until you retire, like life's about working. And I'm like, he's a square. <laughs> I'm like, no, never. Like, I hope I never have a real job. So oh, I think there might be a, a, a conflict when you guys are raising the children though. He's going to be like, go to work, go to school. And you're going to be like, be a butterfly. Yeah, we'll see. Ouch. <laughs> Law of detachment, right? <laughs> okay, I wanted to talk about dimensions. Okay. Have you ever been to any other dimensions? Like astro travel, you mean? We talked about that last yeah. time. Yeah. That's another dimension? I guess it can be. Or you mean like different realities, kind of? Like, have, you, have you been to different realities? Am I still in another dimension in the way you're seeing it? What do you mean? Are you? Like an alternate universe almost. Do you mean like that? No, there's like a third dimension, fourth dimension. Oh, like 4D, 5D? Yeah, something like that. Yes, yeah. Is that yeah. a thing? Is that yeah, real? We're all in a Yeah, we're all in one or all different ones, yeah. So have you been to any other D? We have. You have too, just because of the way the Earth is moving. Okay. So if you've upgraded with the Earth, you have been in different ones, yeah. Okay. Um, stop that for a second. <laughs> I don't remember if I asked you this. Is the, is the Earth flat? I don't think it's flat. You don't think it's flat? Just from an energy standpoint, I think it's round. You think it's round? I do. Okay, sorry, flat earthers. <laughs> okay, back to the other dimensions. What dimensions have you been in? Not the Ds, the astral projection. What else have you been in? Just, I guess just other places. I wouldn't know. I wouldn't call them other dimensions maybe, but just like in the wilderness, on the moon, right? I don't know if those count as other dimensions oh, per moon, se. Yeah, yeah just different realities, I guess. I wanted you to come and tell me more details about all that astral projection okay. to other planets. You told me yes. a lot and I still haven't edited because I was like fucking mind blown, but what else you got? <laughs> I should have done it before I came here because I haven't done it in so long. So I've been to the moon. That was a long time ago. And Venus is the only other planet I've been to, which right. is where I'm from. And that's like... Mm -hmm. The planet of love and like angels is very just angelic and light. And that's how it is. Like when I was there, everything I could see was just like translucent. Like it was just so pretty and just so like, like you just felt like light, like you're floating. Right. You know, it's just like there's no worries there. Nobody there's pays no taxes. Like there's nothing what about wrong. Food? You don't need it? I don't know how that works, honestly. I have no idea. Huh. Just when I was there, it just felt very like. So light. wait, why'd you stop there? Why didn't you visit other planets? Did it get I, don't know. I guess I just had I hadn't thought of it. I just had no interest at the time. Really? I mean, I definitely still can. I just don't know if there's anywhere else. I really. What's the limit? Can you go to other dimensions? I mean, uh, universes? I don't know. I'm not sure. Well, then how do you land on where I've you land? Never try. You. 
there's meditations on YouTube that you can do for this. Like so they will literally just places. tell you, you have to have an intent before you go. Yeah. And you pick the moon and you pick Jupiter. Yeah. But sometimes, I mean, you have to be really good at meditating to do this. Like I would advise meditating for like months before you even try to do it. Cause it is very hard. Right. It's very hard if you've never done it before, but yeah, you just set your intent. Like, where do I want to go? What do I want to experience? Right. I feel like for me, that's how I see stuff. It's like going to Venus. I just wanted to like experience like love and light. So that's all I saw or like all I had in it, and right? An enormous amount of love. Yeah. So it's like maybe if I was like, I want to experience their food. Maybe I could have like seen what they eat, right? Right, right, right? But I feel like it just wasn't what I set up for that trip. Okay, I got you. And then um, are you able to see the future? You say your mom is a psychic. Yeah, I, uh, sometimes when I tune in enough, and this sounds bad, but I really try to stay tuned out a lot in my life to you like you try to stay like tuned out. Why? Because I feel like it's challenging. I need to, like get the full experience of like being a human before I just like oh. go off. Because I think when I get like super up there, I'll just like go live in the woods probably forever and like never see another person. But I feel like the point of coming to Earth and like agreeing to be here, right. I need to like be in society. I need to like see people and like not be like super enlightened in that way. Okay. Have you? Um, they say. Um, I, okay. So when I was very young, I, I could read the future. I've only okay. had two or three bursts of it, and they were not at all. They were one hundred percent accurate. What was it like? It like was, a vision? It was a full picture. I don't know where it mm -hmm. came from. I was very young. I was on the way to school. I'll never forget one of my moments. I was on the way and I just got hit with a picture of a girl wearing a green shirt. And I was like, I was like, I think that girl Kathy's wearing a green shirt today. And I remember I said it. My friend's like, what the fuck? I was like, what does that even mean? We got to school and she was wearing a green shirt. And he's like, how'd you know that? I'm like, I don't know. I just saw a picture. It randomly came into my head. That and then one time on the dot, my mother was waiting for someone to come. And she's like, she's late. And I was like, again, I didn't, I barely even spoke. And I was like, oh, at 8.59, she's going to ring the bell and she's like okay i was like where did that come from <laughs> it's so weird at 8 59 she rang the bell that's hilarious so again but as i got older i lost this power i have remnants of it but mm -hmm. do you get those kind of things too like flashes of imagery yeah i mean stuff like that all the time you get like that all, all the, the time. time yeah all the time like even my boyfriend class right now like i can almost imagine like exactly like how his class is going or i feel like i'm really good at tapping into people more than anything so like somebody's running late i would probably just like tap in and then and, like see what's going you on you could see that just on like an energy level you know if like it's really chaotic i probably would assume that they're like rushing out of the house and they haven't gotten the car yet so i guess just stuff like that i can just like tap into like the energy of I, mean, I do that. Board, yeah, I do that all the time for like stuff that like I might be late to or like I'm like, oh, am I gonna have fun there? I like tap into like what's okay. going on. I'm like, oh, I'm like maybe I should or like maybe I should. Wait. I feel like stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, just all the time. So you've tapped into this podcast. I haven't tapped into this. No, I try to go like unprepared, like not know what you're gonna ask or anything. Cool. Yeah. All right, that's interesting. Um, well, have you ever been able to read your own future, or ha what have you seen ever? yes <laughs> yeah i feel like more like very far ahead like i've seen my kid like my first child my daughter i've had like very like clear visions of like how she looks like how we interact like i always had this one image and it would like come in my dreams and just throughout my day of i'm in my house and i i can like say exactly i have all brown hair i have like super dark brown hair and i have this little girl it's my daughter and the backdrop like the house is just all glass sliders and we're in like the jungle i get this image all the time i don't know why but it's just very like peaceful and serene but i've always had this image so i'm convinced now that whatever house i live in my living room is just gonna be like watch it come true yeah so i think i'll know like when i see the house like maybe it's that, that i'm like oh like this is my house you know like there's some meaning behind it in some way what do you think about um these people who say you could you're gonna lower your powers by calcifying your pineal gland by drinking all this fluorinated water yeah i think fluoride is so bad for you i agree i never buy toothpaste with fluoride Same. like at the dentist and like don't don't Same. touch me with that yeah Same. i think that's so bad yeah what kind of water do you drink I have this filter that's like a mineral filter and a light. Does it filter fluoride? It does. It does. Of course it does. I was raised like that. My parents, my dad's like a water freak. He yeah. drives an hour each way, like every week, to fill up water from literally a natural hot spring running out of the mountain. I love your dad. Yeah, he's insane like that in a good way. Good okay. way. So your mom is a psychic? She is. Do you read medium? poems? Can you read my poem? Ooh, I Briefly. I don't know too much. I'm taking like one class. Is that the hand you write with? No. 
Okay, it has to be the like your dominant hand. Okay. Okay. Ooh. So he has a lot of chains on his palm, like especially here, and this is the beginning of your life. So this looks like you had kind of a harder upbringing yeah. or beginning of your life. Ooh. This is your career line, which is very like at the beginning. It looks like you kind of went back and forth. Like maybe you didn't know what you were going to do, oh, yeah. but it's super defined later on. Like once you know, like you're just, you're going to do that for the rest of your life. Really? Like that's it. Yeah. Um, this is your love line. So his goes over his index, which means he's pretty passionate. He'll probably have a good marriage. It looks like you have you might have two marriages. <laughs> yeah, that's not. I can't promise. Everybody reads palms differently. This is your lifeline, which is pretty good. It does kind of fade out in the end, so you might have some kind of illness when you're like, that looks about like 80, 70 to me. You might kind of degrade for like 10 or 20 years, that's but fine. you're alive. Go like this, just like softly with this side. It looks like he has three kids on his palm. Three what? Kids. But your children yep yeah, this is your some believe this is also your love line right here but i've learned to read it as like how many kids you'll have really yeah your children holy shit and that can be the they always say that could be like a grandkid really connected oh. to like a younger sibling like anything like that it could be wow but what just is yours what does yours say i have three too three no yeah that okay oh like my actual palm does your palm ever line up with what you're actually like you're dating yeah, so yeah. <laughs> what I didn't know until this past March, I went, this is like the, I'll have to send you her info. This is the most like amazing psychic medium I have ever, ever and seen. I she's, yeah, she's like insane. And she predicted like the day I meet this man on what he looked like, like duh, duh. We ended up not working out, right? But she was like, you're going to get married. Like, duh, duh, like, this is it for you. Like, this is it. And I was like, yeah. Like every other psychic I saw for like a year straight was like, you're going to marry him. Like, this is it. And so I go see her after we've broken up for a few months. And she goes, oh, yeah. She goes, you guys must not be together, huh? I said, I didn't say anything. Like, she didn't know. I was like, yeah. She's like, yeah, he moved off your palm. I said, what? I said, I didn't know your palm could change. Yeah. I thought it was just, like, set forever. Right. She goes, yeah, you have somebody else. It might be your boyfriend now. Or you're going to meet somebody, like, right after and marry them. But, like, the next person you're going to marry. Oh. So I never knew that your palm could change. And that was very enlightening to me for sure right. but i was like holy shit what do you mean i thought you said i was gonna get married last year right so i thought that was really interesting so i guess it can change as you go through life and go on maybe based on the decisions you make definitely yeah, yeah. i always like go through this i'm like i wonder what it was to change that you know it had to be something where you had to yeah. pivot between two rows what I did know. You choose? and not like a sad way like i'm happy with the way it worked out i wish him the best you know like i'm not upset about it but i'm just really intrigued to know like what it was that changed no she couldn't that like changed my entire destiny like i just love to know what it was maybe deep down you know but you I know, and his grandparents, like, came in the room, like, in the session, like, his dead grandparents, and they're like, we just want to say, like, we love you so much, like, you made the right decision, like, we're so happy for you, like, da da so it was really sweet, but I was just kind of like, I wonder what it was, right. I really do. Wow. Okay, I, I love these <laughs> questions. Um, so, t t what about time travel? Ooh, have a, that's a good question yeah. okay i definitely believe in that because i feel like with astro travel you can go yeah, back and see your younger self and your older self yeah okay. so you you've time traveled have you ever gone to the future no you know i kind of i never really have just because i want it to be a surprise i guess more than anything what about your mom has she ever seen no she goes back in time a lot though and I do that too. I comfort my younger self a lot. And I feel like that's really great for like healing and stuff. So oh, really? And the other person could hear you? No, it's just like my parents went through a divorce, which was like the most like heartbreaking thing in my life. Dude, so your parents sound awesome. They are. I, I mean, be they, upset if they got divorced. They are best friends. Like they talk for hours every week. Like we spend every holiday together. They are best friends, but they're they're platonic, you know? Um, so I go back to when I was like six, my parents were divorcing. I was like crying all the time. And I just go back. I just comfort myself. Right. And honestly, since doing this, I feel so much better about the entire experience. And I really think it works. Hmm. Were you hurt when your parents got divorced? I was. But I feel like I understood it. Like, especially at that age, I feel like I had a good understanding. And I guess there was no big reason. Like my 
my parents never really cheated it was never like a oh. big blowout like we we all went to court when they got divorced we went out to like dinner and saw a movie after like my dad like stayed the night so it was never like oh are they remarried remarried no neither of them are that's kind of sweet i know i think they're really soulmates like and they both say it. They're like, we're so happy we have you. Like, there is nobody else we would ever want to end up with. But Sometimes people just need to be alone a little bit. No, Dad. I mean, my mom was so young and just, How old yeah. was she when she got married? She was 21. And he was? 42. Oh, I love it. <laughs> I know. I know. My mom's like, oh, I, I feel so bad for all the younger girls these days. Like, it's not, you can't marry old men anymore. Like, it's not acceptable anymore. You could. You can, but she's very like avid that she made the first move and like that this was met, her choice. Yeah, Whole Foods, she dates only like fifty and up. I respect that. And she's twenty four. That's what I thought I end up honestly too. Really? Yeah. What's the oldest you'll date? You're twenty. I'm twenty. I just turned twenty. Yeah. What's the oldest you'll date? I don't know, cause like seriously, dating I've never dated somebody over like twenty three. Okay. That's fair. <laughs> Hypothetically, though, sure, like. 40 38 yeah i guess it's more like are they gonna die before the kids graduate high school too <laughs> well, still young what do you mean <laughs> it is but it's like are they gonna get married to have kids right then i feel like that's another thing that's interesting but don't you feel like men mature much later like is your boyfriend mature for his age i would say he is oh, okay that's rare yeah i think more than anything he's just very like shy and reserved too which i feel like in men comes off as matureness a lot too that's true so you still travel around without him, right? I do. Okay, and he has no insecurity about this. I'm sorry, no. I'm just I'm reflecting no, my own no, insecurities no. on him. He's okay with all. This. Yeah, he's fine. I would I would feel so insecure. I know girls don't like that, but I'll be like, yo, what is she up to, man? No, I mean we travel together. We're traveling for like three months next month together, but yeah. Why do you travel without him? Just out of curiosity. You just I, want to absorb everything you can? I guess right now he's in school and working more than anything. So it's just like he doesn't have the free time to. Mm -hmm. um, I think I just feel I want to more than he does. Like he wants to travel, but he's just much more like work, school okay. than me. So. Okay. Um, last three or four questions. Um, what exactly is Reiki? And tell me a little bit about it. That's always a good question. Yeah. So Reiki is an Eastern medicine. It's Japanese. And it's literally like yeah, this. I you don't touch you just go over but it's like chakras it's like alignment it's just energy right it's like anything you can do with energy you can do with reiki mm -hmm. so it's like i have this client who has like bad knees he's a plumber i like i fix his knees right like he has no pain he has like blockages i can do his blockages i can like open your chakras any of that can you stuff. open mine i could yeah can you do it okay i could teach you how even teach which me, might be better me. so like your your crown chakra you just with both hands, you pull it apart like this, like on your scalp. I have to touch it? Yep. But you have to do both hands. Okay. But yeah, so just like this, you just pull it apart. And you just imagine it opening. And whenever it's like a really shitty day out, which is almost never here in Hawaii, but there's ever like clouds like right now. Right. I imagine I like pull over my crown chakra and I imagine my energy like shooting up above the clouds oh. into the sun. And it makes me so much happier. Right. It's like it's not even shitty out. Right. Your throat chakra... That's very much just like speaking your truth. What, what do you mean by that? So like if your throat chakra is blocked, which I feel with you, I can feel your throat chakra. Meaning I lie a lot. No, you just don't always speak your mind or like say what you want. Yeah. yeah. Do you do that a lot? Yeah, I have that Yeah, I can, I, I can feel his throat chakra. Yeah. yeah. I have a issue with, I just, I, I don't know how to say things. Yeah. No, a lot of people do. That's the one chakra I feel like so heavily on people. Right. But even just like saying what you want to say in the mirror could help just unblock that. And like your third eye is just, you know, spiritual, of course. So, what, is my third eye open, or is everyone's? Or how? Is You're it? pretty decent. Decent. You're, yeah, like seventy percent. Do you do drink? I, alcohol? Fuck no. Okay. I don't drink. Well, that's good. That's usually most people's problem with it. I don't like alcohol. You're I feel pretty like it lowers good. your vibration. I think you just need to like trust yourself more is what I would say. Mm, I like, that. like your intuition, like anything. I feel like one thing about like spirituality and stuff like this or like talking like dead people, it's like you'll think it's just your imagination, but it's really what's true. Mm. So like, when I first started talking to dead people, I was like, that can't be real. Like I'm just making that up in my mind. Like I'm just thinking that. And no, it, it was what they were saying to me. Really? But I feel like it's really hard just to trust yourself in that way, you know? Yeah question for you i think i already know the answer but who's more intuitive men or women different types uh 
I think men are honestly, I mean, it's like they're born more emotional, you know, but then we suppress them in society to be less emotional. Ooh. Okay. I like that. I think they're intuitive different ways. You know, I think women are more into like the love and the prettiness and like the feminine energy. I think, you know, it's just different in that way. Because they did a study on gray matter. Mm -hmm. And they found women have more brain cells than men. I think women too, though, it's just more acceptable for them to be like more yeah. spiritual and in tune. And this uh, famous guy, Gary Brecka, you ever heard of him? Oh, I don't know if I have. He said, women intuition is not, it's not true women's intuition is them being able because they have more gray matter brain cells mm. they pick up frequencies a lot better than men okay. that's what we consider intuition because yeah. they catch on to the they're like this is not going to work out you shouldn't mm -hmm. do that women are better at catching those frequencies i believe and i think right now in the world is very much the age of women so i think most of the women born right now will just be smarter than men and <laughs> you know maybe it used to be different but not anymore oh, i love you <laughs> <laughs> so it's the age of women yeah, especially 2024. That'll be like a huge breakthrough for women. So I'm fucked. I'm fucked. I mean, not if you're a good man, you're fine. I've never been lucky with <laughs> <laughs> So the age of women is... Until when? When is your reign? Oh. Did it just start? It's been starting. It's oh been in like God. the revolutionary, yeah, like the, the build-up. Oh, you guys are telling me there's more coming? Oh, yeah. I have to oh. look at like the... I don't remember when it ends, but there's charts for it. It's... So we've been living in the age... Oh my God, yeah, you're right. It's probably just the beginning. Because we've been in the age of man for a while. Yeah. Fuck, we're so screwed. It's going to be hundreds of years probably. Yeah, I mean, right now in astrology in the world, we're in the exact same astrology that the revolution was. Like, literally, like the French Revolution had the exact same astrology. So when they talk about like wars and stuff... You think like, it's going to happen? Absolutely. Absolutely. Astrology is so spot on. I don't think... I think people discard it a lot. It's just when do like, you think the next mm -hmm. war is coming Oh, I'd have to look at the astrology, but before the whole Israel thing, I saw an astrologer call it the week before, literally like Pluto or like Saturn's going to like conjunct here. Yeah, that week. I mean, we had a huge war. We have a huge war. So when is it going to be like the big war? Because you know how the media they yeah, like to suppress. I'd have lie. to look at the astrology. Even like Russia, I knew the astrology for that was going to happen. Just I mean, you can predict like market crashes with it for right. like investing and stuff. How come you don't invest? You should. You probably would make millions. I work with astrology. I actually just hired a new personal astrologer for my investing. What do you invest in? I don't know. Yeah, I haven't. I haven't had a call with him yet. I just hired him. Oh, he's just investing for you. Yeah. Well, I don't. I haven't had the call yet, so I'm not sure how it works. You should definitely do it. Yeah. Based on your logic. I'm excited though. Yeah. Okay. Um, moving on. Numerology. Oh yes. What do you know about numerology? A fair amount. I know a lot about my own. Do you believe it? I do. Damn, I thought it was so fabricated. Really? I thought it was like cherry picking everything. I think it's a much older system, I would say, or much just more like easy, you know? Or is, it an out, is it an outdated system? I don't know if I'd say that. Mm. Maybe I don't know enough about it to answer that. Mm. I feel like mine's very spot on. Tell me, how, how does it work? What do, I, what do I look for? So you can just type in like, what is my... You know, what is my thing is, I think, I'm pretty sure they go off your birth date. Yes. So it's like all your numbers, right? And then something. So I'm a nine. Nine. I know eight is good. I don't know anything about nine. Yeah, my mom's an eight. Yeah. You're lucky, right? Eight is like the best one to be. Is infinite. I mean, eight so what like, is nine known for? You have to fight for everything. You have to fight for I know. And when I first read that, my mom showed me. I was like, I don't think this is true. Like, I feel like I've had a very just easy going life. But I, I think. The more I get into it, the more I grow, and the older I get, I definitely resonate with it more. Really? Because you feel like you're fighting for something right now? I think just things that some people never have had to like defend or fight for, I feel like I always have. Mm. It's not a bad way. I don't mind it, per se. I mean, I don't love it. Of course, Can you share some one? Um, I guess like my whole like career thing. You know, it's like, of course, Ricky? people get... Yeah, like, of course, people get shit for, like, not, like, going to, like, a four-year college and, like, da-da-da, but I feel like... From others. Yeah, like, or even, I think, people. the whole... I grew up very fortunate. Like, my dad bought me my dream car when I was, like, a teenager, right? I feel like it's, like, oh, like, I got a lot of shit for that, right? I got the whole, like, oh, like, daddy's yeah, yeah. money, yeah. like, da-da-da, but, like, every single one of my friends didn't, like, their parents bought their car, too, but, like, nobody else got shit for it, right? And I had bought my car before that myself, mm -hmm. so I feel like... Just those things that, like, I feel like I just stand out more in that way to mm. people for some reason. It's just kind of stuff like that. It's like, did your parents buy your car, your first car? 
was a big push. I had to so I feel like most people's book. parents do like all my friends have never bought their own car. Their parents have bought it. The first one, yeah, for sure. Yeah, but then it's like, okay, I buy my first car, and then my dad buys my second car. I get all this shit for it. Mm, you, you bought your first car. Well, I don't think you should have gotten shit for the second one. Exactly. But I feel like there's something about me that just kind of stands out a little more in that way that people just oh. like to say shit about. And it's like, I don't know why. Did you post it on social? No, I have never. Nobody even know. I've never posted it on anything. I I've know. never posted on anything. I wish anything. I could help you determine what, but. I know, but it's just stuff like that, like a lot. A mm. lot of just little things like well, that. Oh my God, that was perfect. I feel like you fucking. <laughs> predetermined the I read entire script did you honestly <laughs> no i didn't you sure why did you I hit promise, everything word, I promise, word by word i promise because look it literally says how do you react to criticism i was like how did it hit exact mark at the last okay how do you react to criticism i think i react very good and more than anything i realized like how privileged and fortunate i am to like have a nice car and have this life i've had um but i do believe anybody can have it and i think more than anything the reason i have it now like being outside of like my parents paying for my life now that I pay for myself I just believe it's easy you know I feel like when you tell people that it's very like oh sure it is you mm -hmm. know but it's just like no like, if you believe it's easy it will be mm -hmm. but I think I react to criticism well I don't think I get criticized a lot honestly oh, really? um I wish I got criticized more constructively this was so f okay I gotta tell you can I tell you a story Okay, so I just went back to Arizona for Halloween, which right. is where I went to high school. Okay. Like, all my friends oh, live there. Okay, okay, go ahead. Sorry. We good? Yeah, yeah we're so good. So all my friends live there, right? So, like, I go back. I'm hanging out with, like, all my high school friends, right? And, of course, there's just, like, drama. And, like, I'm like, oh, fuck. Like, I forget how peaceful it is, like, just being so far removed from right. that. But then, like, one of my friends, she's like, yeah, like, people, like, the only thing I've really ever, like, heard everybody criticize you on since you've been gone is that, like, you're such a dreamer. I said, how, like, how is that criticism? Like, why is that a bad thing? Right. But I thought that was so funny. I feel like that was just so validating for me. Like, if that's the worst thing you have to say about me, that isn't even a bad thing to me. Like, I must be doing, like, pretty okay in life. 100%. I don't, that, yeah. I don't see that as a criticism. But I thought that was so funny. Like, she's just, like, such a big dreamer. Like, she just thinks, like, everything will just, like, come to her. Like, life is so easy. And it's just, like, well, it has been. Yeah. Like, I can't. Yeah. yeah like, you have to look back at how they grew up. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I mean. But I think it's just stuff like that. It's funny. It's just like, okay, like I don't really consider that criticism. Right. I feel like I've done well, so. But let's say somebody criticizes you harsh. Like on the social media post, you post this and that. Um, if somebody said something negative, how do you respond to that kind of stuff? I don't respond. Why would you not respond to my comments? Huh? I don't respond to my comments. I will say I'm a very sensitive person. Really? And one of my worst traits, probably my worst trait, literally, I that I would like love to get over. Yeah. Fucking sharp. I think I take things personally. I think oh. I like I really want to be liked by people, so I feel like it's very hard for me when I'm not liked. And I can't you know, this sounds terrible, but I can't say I've ever met somebody who like actually didn't like me. So I feel like I've been very lucky in this way. Right. But I don't take criticism well. Really? Like, I really don't. I never get criticized. Like, I really rarely do. But when I do, I will cry. Like, I am super sensitive. But you shouldn't take what anyone... I know. Listen to me. I'll tell you this advice, and you remember it for the rest of your life. When people are in a bad mood, they criticize the most. Mm -hmm. When people are in a good mood, they won't criticize people. Did you notice mm -hmm. that? Oh, absolutely. So don't take things personally. I've been criticized since I was a fucking kid. You're stupid. You're this. You're short. I'm like, man, who gives a fuck? You're just having a bad day, bro. I'm like, you feel like directing the energy to me, and I refuse to believe it. That's it. I'm with you, and I tell myself that. I that as I said, that is my worst trait. Like, I really, I just, I guess the thing is, it's just like, why? Like, I have like never said anything yeah. like bad to somebody else. You're a very positive person. Thank you. Positive yeah. energy attracts positive more, more of yeah. the positive. That's what I mean. So I feel like I've been lucky in that way that I'm not around people who are right. negative in that way, but. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Last question for you. What is a conspiracy theory that you believe in? Ooh. <laughs> oh, this is a good one. Oh, that's a good one because there's so many. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Okay, I believe in what's the new CIA documents that got leaked, like the quantum jumping. Is that what it was? No, what is that? I... What? It was something like that, right? Like the leaping of some kind? Do you know what I'm talking about? Is it the one we talked about last time? Mate, it was always like so controversial. I believe in whatever that one was. Uh, the only thing I've read was it was recent. 
yes like a few months maybe or that i heard about it something like leaping realities basically yeah yeah yeah. i yeah. read that one the cia where they were doing like the four to seven hertz frequency i feel like that's very much do you do you not think of that's course, like I, okay. I think that's so I easy yeah i think you could absolutely just like jump into a new life wait what what did you just say i didn't I think I, you I, can maybe you had the wrong file well, so what did they say that you you can really just jump into like a new life like a new reality what the fuck and stay there yes which i think is weird because when i think about it i'm like oh like do you sell the same people like w like what what happens really right. but i think i've done that a few times honestly so you're living in an altered reality right now that you chose yeah i mean we all are right everybody has their own reality and their own own never, world. I think, yeah I, I don't think i've quantum leap but maybe to a degree i get what you're saying i think i've had a few moments in my life where i'm really like yeah mm -hmm. stepped into something brand new and different what's the decision you made that altered it do you think breaking up with your ex was uh that was a huge i think moving was my biggest oh, yeah. best decision like i've ever made yeah 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 to hawaii right no to wilmington north carolina oh from arizona <laughs> why there you like it yeah that, that's my favorite place in the united states why? yeah it's homey to me my mom grew up there um it's great if you've ever been in wilmington north carolina it's like the best place ever it's like uh -huh. it's just like a small little beach town and everybody's very hippie and just like neat and cool wilmington yes wilmington north carolina is amazing it is amazing yeah, it's just very hippie, like farmer's markets on the beach, everybody's just laid oh, back. Oh, hella cute. Yeah. What's the weather there year-round? It's pretty nice. I will say in the winter, though, it gets a little gloomy, but they never get snow or anything like that. That's cute. Look at this. Yeah. No, it's super historic. Like, I lived in one of, like, the it's historical houses that they, it's like, some war that happened. It was, like, a yeah. hospital for everybody or something. Oh, that is really cute. Yeah. I love it there. I love it there. Yeah, it's beautiful. Okay, before we conclude, anything else you can share or anything you want to know? Oh. oh, I would love to know so much. What would you like to ask me? Oh, okay, that's a good question. I mean, like, I, my, my resources are limited in my head. Okay, what's your most, like, controversial opinion? Mm, COVID, but I can get canceled for that. Um, I have too many controversial Oh, can I know about the COVID one off camera? Sure, it's... Well, I'll ask the editor to cut it out. Well, yeah, I don't even want my editor to see this. <laughs> <laughs> don't answer. Yeah, I want to answer, but let me turn off the camera and then we can have this conversation. Oh, funny.